NBC and Bravo reality show stars led by Bethany Frankel accuse networks of covering up sexual violence, condoning revenge porn, exploiting minors and denying mental health treatment in a bombshell legal letter. Here to discuss this today is the reality show guru and expert extraordinaire, David Yontif from Behind the Velvet Rope. Thank you, David, so much for joining me. It is such an honor and a pleasure to have you breaking down what is going on in this reality Bravo sphere, NBC sphere, everything like that. How are you? This is like an official crossover. You are now in the ranks of all my regular crossovers. This is good, Rachel. We're doing some collaborations here. We really are. Well, the first thing I want to know is what do you think of my haircut? I mean, I like it. I like it. Oh, I mean, listen, you don't I'm sound all, like you love it. No, no, no. I'm all, I'm taking it in. I'm all for a haircut. I personally like shorter hair on women. So I'm, I'm all for it. Really? Well, like change. A, as uh, Melissa Rivers said, you know, the, one of the best things you could do to, to change your life is have a good haircut that it reshapes your entire look. I agree. And you know what? I don't understand. Why is it when you go to the same person for a haircut? It's like good, 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 bad, good, good, bad. Like if it's always good, why can't it always be good? It's not. They they screw up sometimes. I know. It's like luck of the draw. Anyway, so let's get to why we're here. Can you break down what is going on and what these papers mean that were filed by Mark Garagos? I mean, Bethany Frankel is, 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 you know, listen, she says she was going to, you know, call for this potential strike because of SAG after. And you're like, all right, listen, if Bethany, if anyone could do it, Bethany could, right? I mean, she led the Be Strong movement. She's flying planes to Puerto Rico and delivering relief supplies. But you don't really, like, is this going to go anywhere? Then when she says, you know, I have like Mark Garagos and Brian Friedman involved, I'm like, okay, well, this is not just going away. Brian Freeman has even said this is war. So this is going to be an interesting one, Rachel, to see how this all plays out. But why is she doing this? Because everyone thought she was a Bravo darling. She's done so well with her career and her life since her show. She obviously did well on the show. She led the charge. She was like, you know, she led the charge in in terms of housewives and how they can turn that into a lucrative business. So why do you think she is now turning on them? Well, a couple of things. I mean, honestly, a couple of things. I think that first of all, it's like, look, she when she says that she's been given the opportunity to be invited back to the network many times, that is true. She could have been part of the girls' trip for New York, and she could have been back on Housewives. So she clearly doesn't want to give up the control and go back. And like, if anyone's really following her that closely, you know, with all these different incarnations of her podcast, she really has been doing these TikToks. And lately, even before this, exposing like, let me tell you how it's it's. I kind of have the same style on my podcast of like, let. Let's cut through the bullshit. This is how this bullshit really works. Now, for everything I know, Bethany knows 10 times more. I mean, she was on the damn show for that long. So she's really been going down this road of like, let me tell you how this really works. And it's not all rosy. So she's been saying these things quietly, like on her own platform for you know, last few months. So I do believe she really look, it's all about Bethany as well. So, like, she doesn't need the money. She truly does not want to go back to housewives. That's not like a, you know, I don't want to go back. What's the end goal for all these people? Are they asking for money? Are they asking to just have their voice heard? Like, I'm not understanding what they're asking for. Well, Bethany is, I mean, like I have to get into the papers and really read it all. But I mean, a lot of it is it's the money. It's like, you know, we don't, we film and we sign our rights away and we'll get into like, you know what you're signing and all that. But, you know, there's no back end, like, you know, residuals, like friends get residuals, the modern family people. Mind you, I know a lot of, I interview a lot of like 80s and 90s stars on my podcast. None of them are making any money from residuals. So it's like, you know, there are but she's saying at least you should make something like if she's on season one of Real Housewives in New York and now they play it on Peacock and Hulu and they're doing a Bravo marathon over Christmas, like every time it airs, we should get something her and everyone else. That's what first thing she's claiming. So one of it the main sounds things. it sounds like this law, this potential lawsuit is just asking for things to change later like starting now, but it doesn't sound like it's asking for retroactive payment. Or do you think people will be asking for a settlement from Bravo? 
and all the other networks. I believe, and I have to, I because she keeps doing these TikToks, and it's. I think they, I think it's going forward a lot. I don't know if they're asking for anything in back pay, but I think she's asking like immediately that these things change. That's one of them. I know she's also asking for the Bethany clause to be stricken. You know, she signed that initial contract for $7,250 because she said the number a million times and she struck, struck this clause that said, I will not give you a potential, you know, a percentage of any business that I get off this show. Ever since she sold Skinny Girl, I don't know if it was really 120 million. That's I've heard a lot of stories that that's not the real number, that it was less. But whatever it was, Bravo got nothing. And that changed the whole thing. And now there's this clause that says you have. And when I say you have to give them a percentage of everything, I believe that applies to everything. Books, Countess Luann's Cabaret, Ariana's on Dancing with the Stars, anything that you get, you make $100,000 in Dancing with the Stars, you owe them whatever percentage. That's what the Bethany clause is. And and she wants that stricken. And do you think that that extends to even when you're off the show? So like after um, these people are no longer on the show and they're still getting book deals or alcohol deals or whatever it is, does that go beyond their time on the show? I think my understanding is if the product started when you were on the show. I, I don't know if the product started. We have the more questions you ask me, the more questions I realize I actually have. That's a good point. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You know, but so there's a lot of questions to be asked and a lot of things to change going forward, I think is the the ball game we're having right now of like, is this really going to stick? And probably they are they meaning the lawyers are seeing how many people are going to contact them right now and say, hey, we want to be part of this. And from there, because I think the papers were a warning and and the fact that a suit was going to be is being filed, but it doesn't say what they want. It doesn't say what they're asking for. At least we don't know that yet. And obviously it's to change the, the laws and the values going forward and create a union. But as of what these people and why they want to jump on the bandwagon now, is it because they think they're going to get something out of it now and some sort of payment for the abuse that they've gone through or whatever they're claiming, right? Yeah, and like the papers, yeah, it wasn't a lawsuit, but the papers also are saying, look, we're not getting to the contract. Like the contract, you, you're you getting consideration, you're signing, you're doing a job, you're getting paid. They're not saying the contracts, you know, yes, you knew what you were signing, but they're saying like, you as a human being cannot sign away like unconscionable and put yourself in like harm's way. So mm-hmm. they're, that's where they're egregious. And listen, I know people, I know people that on my show have told stories of like, you know, the doors were locked. I, I tried to leave filming. I tried to open the door. They said, you're, you're not leaving filming. You're going to go have a confrontation with that person. I understand you want to leave. You're not. Now that's also false imprisonment. I mean, I, I'm a lawyer myself, but that has nothing to do with it. So it's like, they're just saying like situations like that or situations like, listen, you were on Millionaire Matchmaker for for me, I mean, this just happened for me, a millionaire matchmaker, you know, I showed up, I was at the mixer. My mixer was at seven 30 in the morning. I was like, they're like, what do you want to drink? I'm like, Oh my God, thank God. I'm like, I, I need the biggest, strongest black coffee you have. They're like, mm-hmm. what? they're like, no, you have to have a drink. I mean, that did happen to me. I mean, I'm not joining the suit or I'm not even asked because I was on one freaking episode, but you know, there's all these things about like being forced to drink and, you know, being locked in somewhere. So they're saying like the situations, like you can't, it's not whether you sign the contract or not. It's that you can't put people in these type of situations like this is outside the realm of the contract so yes they're saying it was like those type of conditions and they're asking for fair and equal pay and like who knows like sag after you get health insurance i don't know but this could be big yeah it could be very big so obviously this all started because of the strike that's going on with the writer strike um right now and everything's sort of shut down um in terms of real hollywood So the only kind of TV that's going on and filming right now is reality TV, right? And I think, you know, Bethany and whoever else got this idea because now it's like these people are should be valued because that's where entertainment is coming from, right? What I have been saying to you on your podcast and Behind the Velvet Rope and on mine when we talk, because my podcast really isn't about reality TV, but we have talked about what's been going on with... Vanderpump rules. Now, I, from the beginning, have thought that 
this whole way that people reacted towards Raquel and Tom's affair was completely out of control. And I think I even said to you on your podcast that I felt like, you know, somebody is going to have some repercussions. Is Bravo, the network, going to be canceled, going going to be culture canceled um, because of what's going on right now and because of sort of the fallout from the Vanderpump Rules scandal? I really think that the way, I mean, I remember talking to you about what happened at the Um, reunion and saying, I was shocked to see how not only Andy, but Lisa, and then probably the other staff allowed that kind of verbal abuse and assault, verbal assaults kind of to go on in that room, because that it reminds me of Trump. Do you know what I mean? It's like the people that sit there and riot and are nasty and mean, just, you know, fester more people to be behave that way. And it's just not okay. And the way that those, you know, that Lala and Jason got a, is that his name? Jason? Kennedy? James. J- James Kennedy, the one with the accent. Everyone has two names. So you're, you're under, you thinking his name was Jason is very understandable. No, it's James. It's James. James. Okay. It. Yes. So, so the fact that they got up and screamed at her, pointed in her face and was like, shut up, you moron. Like all these things. There's a way to conduct yourself on TV to get ratings. But that to me was like abusive. And I thought that as a as a character, it's one thing. But as a character for for Rachel, uh, Raquel, I, I thought, you know what, that's this is over the top. And a network should have stepped in and said, guys, control yourself like this is not OK. We love a good Trump reference, even though we accept all political um, we do. aspirations here. And, you know, we have lots of conservative listeners and lots of liberal listeners. Um, no, I mean, I, I get your point. And like, you know, you also have to think of like nothing they wrote even gets into like, I mean, there have been lawsuits between Bravo people for actual physical altercation. So there's all that, too. I mean, this isn't even getting like we involved. saw with uh, the filming at Pota- the Housewives of Potomac, Potomac, or yeah. Potomac. people were wh- ripping off wigs, punching each other, f- threatening to to knock each other. Which out I'm telling you, I, I guarantee you, we will never see that. I guarantee you that will that will be edited out. It was between two friends of not even main characters. I guarantee you what we saw will never make the light of day next season on Potomac. But never. do you think that was real or you think they were trying to get on the show? Well, that's well, I mean, they were officially friends of, but right, that makes it even worse. I think they were, I think it was both. I think two things get to be true. I think it was real, and I think they were thirsty and they wanted their moment and they thought, and I really think, to be honest with you, I think it wouldn't shock me if they were fired because yeah. of this. They're not, it's not caring. Well, or at Giselle. least now, right? At least now, because of what's happening. So, okay, there was certain parts of the, of what happened in the paperwork that I thought was kind of obvious when they're talking okay. about how some kids were not paid for their usage, their likeness, whatever. And they for years have been on the show and got no residuals and got no payment for it. What do you think about that? That's obviously right. the kids of, you know, I can think of kids, probably Tamara's kids, um, Teresa's kids. What, do you think they were ever paid to begin with? I mean, there's like Teresa's kids I've heard at times have been paid. Yeah. But I think in, I, so I think there's exceptions like Brielle mm-hmm. Beerman, of course, that was paid for don't get tardy, but yeah, in general, that's true. In general, the, the house husbands don't get paid. So really the husbands, the kids, nobody gets paid except for the actual housewife in general with some rare exceptions. And you know what? I just had dinner with Harry Dubin two nights ago and we talked about this. Yeah. And we talked about, uh, we went to a place called Harry's in West Palm beach. It's actually Uh the new hot spot here. Did you tell Harry Uh, I said hi? I did. I did. Okay. But, um, and Harry's, Harry's going to be doing my, uh, podcast soon to talk all things reality TV and what it was like to, uh, be on the show. But he he was on this podcast. Go on. Yeah. But what he said to me was, you know, Harry is someone who's very interesting because he was on a number of episodes as the as the other, the friend, the guy who was in relationships with a new a number of housewives. His name is still synonymous with the show. He told me one season he was paid ten thousand dollars. He's never been paid ever uh, for another season, but his name is more famous 
than half of the people that have been on it for a number of different seasons. So every night I'm out with Harry, including two nights ago, women come up to him and want to know him, want to talk to him, want to associate with him just because of his interaction with the show. They think of him as big as a Ramona or a Countess Luann or whatever. So I find that really interesting that he, you know, got paid so little, but made so much traction for himself. But to him, he thinks it's a bad look, right? He doesn't want to be associated with it because he's a real person that has a real job and a career and a life. And it, he feels like it dumbs him down. I asked him if he was going to join the lawsuit and he said, absolutely not. He didn't believe in that kind of stuff, but he wishes everybody the best. Interesting. Well, first of all, um, you know, I've been with him many nights at the Regency. I've been out with you and him together. Yeah. People come up to him wherever he goes. It's a real thing that it's like, we're not making it up. I've seen it happen. But that's the power of reality TV, making you into a star. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, my mouth is on the floor and it takes a lot to shock me in reality TV. I'm shocked he was even paid $10,000. Shocked. Shocked. I would have said zero, zero, zero and zero for Harry. Yeah. Well, Harry, I feel like was a big enough star and his name came up enough that they probably felt that they could pay him. Do you know what I mean? So I mean, he, he did it. it. He... I don't know about Mario. I've been on a couple of dates with Mario. I should have asked him, but I didn't. <laughs> Mario would be such a good match for you. We've been on some dates. We've been on recently. Some dates. He's actually a great guy. No, a few years ago, we we went on some dates. I, you know, I met him on Bumble. Um, he came to New York and he took me out on a date in New York. We had a great time. And then um, maybe two years later, I was down in Florida and he came to a dinner party at my house. And uh, it was actually a great story. He kissed me goodnight by his car and my daughter, I had put her to sleep already. And there was like 10 people in the house. And I walked him out to his car to say goodbye to him. And he kisses me and I hear a piercing scream. And it was like something out of the exorcist movie. My daughter, who was young at the time, was standing under the light of the foyer in the in the house with the door open and just screamed a high pitched scream because she saw us kissing. It wasn't like a makeout kiss. It was just like a, a peck, but a long peck, you know, it was horrifying. And he jumped. I jumped and I was like, Wyatt, what is your problem? And then she ran back in the house. And that was the last time I saw Mario. <laughs> oh, my we're God. all talking about Mario Singer for people that don't know what we're talking about. Ramona's ex-husband. And did Mario say, man, this would be such a trade up from that train wreck Ramona Singer? No, he always spoke very kindly of her. And well, guess what? Guess that's who a, does, That's a sign of a nice guy. Guess who does not speak very kindly of her? David yeah. Yontep from Behind the Velvet Rope. So we could just leave it at that. Oh my Nothing my listeners have not heard before. Um, love you, Avery. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, that's a very interesting story about um, Mario. I, I would have said Harry got paid zero. So he, because I thought of him, I thought of him as asking him myself, like, so he's not joining the lawsuit. He just doesn't want to do it. No. So let's make some predictions wow. on who you think is in the lawsuit. Do you know who also who doesn't you want think- Go ahead. To join the lawsuit. I was going to say Kim D on uh, my weekly Patreon. She has a story. I mean, she has a lot of stories, but I've known this story for years. She's told it like she was one of the ones and she was in Teresa was going to throw the drink on her. And she, that's when she was like, no one's throwing a drink on me. She went to leave. She's one of many, but she's a, a specifically, and she had a big girlfriend and the girlfriend was like, I mean, not a girlfriend, like romantically, but her girlfriend's like, we're going to just unbolt the door. Like we're not staying. And producers were like, they formed like a thing of like, you cannot cross. You have to go confront Teresa. So that's where it's like those situations. And this is just because I know Kim, but I know other stories too. Like you can't. Hold on. Was that, was that um, forced? Did they know that Teresa was going to flip a table and, you know, are those things pre-produced and they tell her to freak out like that? They were setting it up for like, Kim saw the drink and she's like, no one is throwing a drink on me. You've got to be kidding me. And that's when she's like, I'm out, I'm out. You're all dirty bitches. And I think she meant producers to everyone. And that's where it's like, you can't stop people from leaving somewhere. Alison Dubois, the medium from the dinner party from Beverly Hills said on my show, you know, when she went to that dinner party, they took her keys. They didn't take her keys because she was drinking. They also made her drink. She said, I've never, everyone knows Alison from this huge martini glass. And Alison has said, 
that was the glass they they brought me to drink it. There was no alternative glass. This wasn't like a rest. They they brought the glass and that was the only option, an extra, extra large martini glass. She's like, they didn't take my keys because I was drinking. They took my keys because they're like, she tried to leave. And they said, the scene is not even near over. This is only beginning. You physically cannot leave. So when you get into things like this, you're like, there's a lot of things that are probably outside the norm. And that's what a lot of this paperwork suggests of like, forget what you signed, like you're not signing your, you know, you can't be treated a certain way, regardless of what you sign. That's almost goes to like a hostile workplace. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, that reminds me of when I was on Millionaire Matchmaker and they, it was a little bit different because it was a celebrity version and they, um, Patty picked my suitors. Um, she interviewed them for me and then she, she helped pick the final one for me. And then they created a, a baseball date. Like we, we were at a batting cage and then we had to go to a dinner that night. And I had nothing in common with this guy. I had no chemistry, but the way they edited it, they made it look like we were falling madly in love. Every time they would go to do the one-on-one with us and they would do production, we would shoot of us, you know, hitting the ball. And then we'd have to do one-on-ones and they'd tell me what to say. They would say, Rachel, you, you should say, you know, all these positive things and that you're really falling for him. And it was really hot when he did this. And I was laughing with the producer at the time. I forget her name. I really liked her actually. I was like, but I, I hate him. Like there's nothing that I'm attracted to about them, him. And she's like, but Rachel, we're trying to edit this a certain way. Come on, get on board. And the night where I had that night, we went to a restaurant. I could not, I can talk to a toad. I literally can talk to a frog. I could not talk to this guy. I had nothing to say to him. It was awful. And halfway through production, they told me, they pulled me aside and they said, we need you to kiss him. I said, how am I going to kiss this guy? I have, I can't, and what, how would that even be normal? We're not even talking about anything. And they told me how to do it, when to do it. They told me when I got up from the table, walk straight out, go to the front door and there's cameras hidden there and get and do the kiss. Well, it was so amazing the way they edited it because I'm walking out with him. He's talking about a bunch of nonsense. And literally I turn to him as he's in the middle of a sentence and I pull him in and I kiss him quite frankly to shut him up. And I had seen out of the corner of my eyes all the cameramen there. You know what I mean? And by the way, this was a restaurant hustling and bustling with people eating there. So it was a little bit uncomfortable. And I pull him in and I start to kiss him. And I had warned her. I said, you're getting one kiss from me. And that's really it. And it all worked. And then the way they edited it with the music swelling and, you know, our beautiful, the way we looked, we looked so good that it all made sense that this was a great date. But I can tell you it was completely fabricated. Yeah. Well, and I mean, now, and we're not knocking Patty. I have a very no, loyal, Patty. and I have a very loyal listener. You might know her. Her name is Jill Zarin from the Real Housewives of New York. I, Jill is listening. This is a real true story. I love you, Jill. So Jill, we know that you're listening and we know that you're going to call Patty. Patty can listen to we are not saying anything bad about Patty. This is not a joke, Rachel. This is real. <laughs> so Jill, before you call Patty, we are not saying anything bad about Patty. We love Patty Stanger. No, Patty's there. great. It was the production of it. I know. I know. She wasn't even there that night. She doesn't even know what happened. I know. Trust me. I, this is, I just want to make it very clear. We And we love you too, Jill. Um, so no, she's listening. I'm not joking. Um, so, you know, this is, this is all, this is all what's going on. Like, listen, I think everybody is interested. Everyone is quietly saying, go Bethany, right? Like if you could start getting residuals, you know, I, I think it's going back. Like if you were on a show that you're not on anymore and they air it tomorrow and you could start getting something. Yeah. Celebrity think- rehab is on Amazon prime. I think it was the best season that I was on. I would love to get residuals because I'd be promoting it all the time. And I was on million dollar listing. I was on millionaire matchmaker. I'd like some money too. Like, can I get some money from this? All right. So let's make some predictions of who you think might already be in the lawsuit or should be. And then and we like- should talk about what's going to happen with all this. Yeah. 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 So, so who do you think? In? Well, I said this, I said this recently to someone, I don't know if it was you, the two people I think that are probably in where there's rumors, but I mean, they really, I think the two biggest names that would really help this once these names are revealed are A, Meanie Leaks and B, 
Raquel, Rachel Levis. Those are the two names right now that I think we need to see. If that, if they're there, I mean, Nini sued Bravo and there's a little piece of it that's still going on. So I don't know if Nini has been told by her lawyers to lay low, but you know, her name has been thrown around that, Mm. But to me, it's like, if if I were Bethany, I would align myself for the help. I mean, granted, you have Garagos and Friedman, you don't need a bunch of help. But like, Nini is such a pool of, Nini has even said, I've been saying all this. Now we could all read into this any way you want, but she's like, I've been saying all of this and no one has taken me seriously. Now, whatever that is, we can't go back. But I think if Nini joined with Bethany, whether it was number two or behind the scenes, Nini's got a lot of stories and, it, and the dirt is going to come out. And Raquel, for sure, because she's the one that I think really started to have people see what was going on here. But then, you know, you have people like Kelly Dodd, who I know she's kind of controversial. A lot of people, you know, have their feelings about her. However, I've watched people on Bravo, including Andy during Watch What Happens Live, you know, and other people on it, like facilitate talking badly about her. Now, whether or not this gets to her and, you know, makes her have a mental health crisis, that's, it is the point, I guess. But like the the point before that is that these people are continually talking shit about people no longer on the show. And that could be really debilitating for someone. And they may have been kicked off a show because they didn't say or do the right thing or participate in a way. So I think she's an interesting one. Someone for me, you know, I think a big person that should get involved would be Mike Shewitt from uh, from Shaws of Sunset, because they made it seem like because of his sort of issues he was having and the stuff that he was in um, on TMZ for and uh, that with Paulina, which was alleged in all of that. Yeah, with Paulina, that um, that the show was canceled. And I've actually spoken to him and that's not the case. The show was canceled before that. And he has a story to tell. And I think it'll be an interesting story to tell. But I think that whole cast, you know, because the show was canceled, there's a lot of questions of what happened there. And yes, yes, yes. And yes. Um, The thing with Raquel, well, her her castmates, I mean, we're heavily into the new season and there is no Raquel. So this whole she's been holding out for money. I don't know. But her castmates are now starting to say, oh, we don't think she's coming. We think she's joining Bethany's lawsuit. Just want to say two things get to be true. You can actually be on the show and still be a part of this. I agree. I think if Bethany hasn't spoken to her, it's such a missed opportunity. I would think she has. I mean, right. The way she was treated. I mean, also, right. The thing with Mike is you can say anything you want. Look at what Bravo is being accused of. If the ratings were good on Shaz of Sunset, Mike could have gone and rid it off into the sunset and may have lost his job. The show would have still gone on. Also, you know whose name is thrown around as attached to the lawsuit is Stassi Schroeder, because that is another thing which is being tied to this is, you know, at a normal workplace, like you look at Chris Harrison, Chris Harrison, for being racially insensitive to Rachel Lindsay, we're not going to argue those debates today, left with $25 million. Mm. At Bravo, where is Stassi's money? Agree with her. Don't agree with her. Call her a racist. Cancel her. She was exited out because of this thing with Faith. Why? Where's her money? You think she got a kick to the curb. Now, I'm not saying justice for Stassi. I'm just saying you can't just have people go away. There should, in a normal corporation, I was in HR at Martha Stewart forever. You get if you are, Yeah, you get you get something and it's, it's you just don't sign. It says, Stasi Schroeder will never sue us for wrongful termination if you sign here. Two weeks, go fuck yourself. Two years, great, let me sign, right? Like they didn't, they didn't say to Chris Harrison, here's $25 million. They said, oh, you know where everybody is buried. You know, at you don't think on The Bachelor, you know, the stories I've heard, honey, with plying people, and then you have a fantasy suite and, and there's mm-hmm. sex involved. Uh, Chris Harrison said, I know where everybody is buried, everyone. So where do you want to begin? And it ended at 25 million. And what about the guy who was gay and hiding it? And he was The Bachelor. Colton like, Underwood. Yes, yeah, exactly. Colton Underwood. Like that just reminds me of that scenario. This guy was so pressured for the money and the fame and the likability that he kept going on and on with the secret that he was gay. Right. And he just said that he was a virgin and that he hadn't found the right one. But I mean, he went to the fantasy suite, didn't he? I mean, the pressure that took 
place in his head. I can't even imagine uh, what that was like for him to not be able to talk like that. I am going in no fantasy suite with nobody unless they're a man. Okay. <laughs> let, let, I don't even know where I was going with that, but none of the bachelorette contestants would I go with. No offense. Um, yeah. I mean, listen, I understand like you do sign a contract and so yeah, you, you know, you get, but it, it, I'm not arguing that. I mean, I'm not arguing the first year salary. I'm not arguing anything. It's just at some point there's certain things, which just there's bad behavior practices. And I don't know where all this goes. It's just when the names come out, like Paige DeSorbo's name is being circulated. She's currently on Summer House. She's the only name, like if it comes out and it's a bunch of people, it's apparently housewives heavy that are ex-housewives and ex-employees. It's like, is this even, where do we go? The people there all want Bethany to go forward with this, but like, where do we go from there? No one's going to speak up and say that. But then, you know, I'm curious if this lawsuit is going to be looked at as frivolous because it's the people that are going to be clamoring to get on board are people that were fired and they just want a job back or some sort of retribution because they were fired because of their own behavior or because casting didn't like them. I mean, how do you determine whether or not you left or you had issues with production because you were in a position where you were being treated wrong? Or did you really cause your own demise? I mean, remember what's the girl's name from um, Summer House? Hannah? That she's her name is on there. Yep. Yeah. So let's talk about her for a second, because I remember people were happy when she was kicked off, but it was her own behavior that caused it. Correct. Yeah. Allegedly, she got too big for her britches. But to your point, that is the exact same thing, which is like and I said this the other day, too. It's like, you know, you were just basically raped if you're a woman and you go to the police and or you know what they they will say, you know, the lawyers will say this is what you're facing if you bring charges. Now you should, but every bad, I mean, where do we go? Every bad fact someone did, yes, Bravo will hit back with, I mean, it could get ugly. Like, okay, first on the list, Hannah Burner. Let us tell you what she did behind. Let us reveal the 37,000 emails that she sent. Next, Kelly Dodd. Okay, here are her emails where she said this word to us and that word. I mean, it works both your bad facts of your employment will be brought out publicly. Yes. I mean, does any, do any of these people care? Probably not, but yeah, it's going to be, that's, you I know. agree. It's going to get messy and uh, people are going to be throwing, you know, sling tosses of, of shit against each other. But if it's a class action suit, I wonder how that works. If it gets individual and they have to go down the list of why each person was canceled or you know, fired or whatever for their own behavior. Um, But, you know, what are your thoughts on if people are very sexual? I mean, there was talk about people uh, showing porn and, you know, being involved in some sort of porn without their consent. Um, What are your thoughts on that? Because isn't the whole premise of like summer house and winter house to see them all hook up and be together. So now they're going to claim that they were forced to have sex with someone for the show. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? And I'm convinced that that is that Danielle Staub is part of this lawsuit because she smells a dollar and it's from Jersey. Danielle Staub back in her day, she made this porn, even though me, I think it was before, but it, that was going around. I think they brought it up on the show. I can't even remember that was going around. So I, I just think that refers to that, but Yeah, I mean, look, it's going to get, you know, and then they also said, I think another part of it was, and this is what I'd be interested in. I would love to see these emails and texts, like where they say they were told by NBC Bravo producers, you're not happy. Oh, you, you were mistreated. If you breathe a word of this, you're done. That because that is alleged, not in so many, in so many words, I'm making it a little more dramatic, but I would love to see where like an NBC Andy um, producer say, "Keep your mouth shut. I don't care what you saw." That that could be, that's big. I think if so, that's but, real. But don't you think that people that get involved in this know that they have to act out to keep their fame, to keep their job, and to keep their relevancy? So, I, as you you know, um, I was on the short list to be on Housewives of New York. They called me out of the blue. 
Um, <clears throat> I didn't even have an agent at the time. And they called an agent that had worked with me years before. He pitched it to me and said, there's only five people in the short line, in the short list. And they have now made you one of them. They had me do some Zoom calls, a, a video, stuff like that. Um, and to be honest with you, not to toot my own horn, but just in, in terms of Housewives of New York, I am more of a New Yorker than any of the women that they've really had on the show. I was in, you know, I went to private school in New York. I grew up in New York. I uh, lost my fiance in September 11th. I owned two businesses, two, uh, you know, clothing store businesses in New York and was like a struggling New Yorker trying to make my life there. Then I had been in the Tiger Woods scandal and my name was all over the papers, even though it was all over the papers for being a New Yorker during September 11th. Like of anyone you're going to get, that's going to give you headlines. I was somebody they should have, it would have been correct to cast me. Right. But I will tell you that. So they cast Leah instead of me. What was interesting is that with my personality and with me, like I will, I believe in the underdog. I will go after anyone. I will stand my ground, but I'm not going to be mean to people out of nowhere just to get ratings. Um, I am, I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm going to say what's right, but there is no shot that someone's going to say to me, all right, we're going to fabricate an argument, get involved, be the bully. That would never work with me. I would be like, go fuck yourself. And I will expose you because that's not how it works. And that's not going to work for me. So I feel like that's probably why I didn't get picked. I was just going to say, sweetie, this is why you didn't get picked. Also, you got me a little queasy with the Ramona talk. Now you have completely made me lose my lunch with the mention of Leah McSweeney. Completely. Horrible person. Um, And, you know, this isn't to be edited out. She just is horrible. So I I would have gone with you. Uh, you know what it is? It's called reality TV. So whether you're more of a New Yorker than her, by the way, because you're such a New Yorker is the reason I fixed you up with Bo Deedle, two New yes, Yorkers. That's right. But we're still looking, guys. We're still looking for Rachel over here. But we had well, a great no, night wait, at Rachel. I just will wow. say, I loved Bo Deedle. I know great, you did. I we know had a did. great interview on my podcast. We had a great date at, at Rayo's. I thought he was super sexy the way he carries himself. The fact that he took off his jacket and he was packing. Oh, I mean, he had I a, love a, gun. a gun. I love a gun. Uh, like connected to his belt buckle. It was super hot. The respect he commands from all the people in the room, wherever he goes. Um, I love that he knows the wise guys and the police department. I mean, the guy is just completely connected and he treated me really well. Listen, I live in Florida now. He lives in New York. We still keep in touch, but I don't know that it was a love connection. But if I lived in New York, I would definitely, you know, he he was a great guy. He was a great guy. So. I mean, I, I, I love Bo Deedle. Um, To quickly answer a question before we move on, why don't I like Leah? And I've talked about this on my show before. I like authentic people. So if your story is that you were the poor girl, Leah, growing up and you saw all the girls with the Chloe bags and the Louis bags and you wanted to be Tinsley, you wanted that. And that's, that's a story. That's okay. I mean, you should be happy with what you have, but if you were always the one and you know, you, you know, you felt like, look at all these girls, they're just so nice. And my, my clothes are like hand-me-downs and I'm embarrassed and I wish I had money. I'm okay with that story. When you get on the housewives, just admit that, just say that you, when you act then that you're downtown and you're the cool downtown street vibe chick, but you would cut off your arm, have it bleed from the socket to be dining at, you know, the Mark Hotel and Cafe Carlisle every night. And you want that life so bad. And you're pretending like, oh, I would never want that. It's called inauthenticity. And then I have no time for you. And yeah. Leah's just that in a nutshell. So right. that's right. one major reason why I'm not a fan. Got like so you identity pre- crisis. You would have preferred if I had got cast that year. Well, I would have preferred that you were cast for a lot of reasons. Cause I mean, eventually they'd be like, what's your fucking storyline? And you would say, it's my gay BFF, David. And then I, I mean, it all comes back to me, sweetheart, you know, and you could have brought Harry on. We could have had a night at the Regency. So, I mean, I have my own ulterior motives, but yes, I do think you or, you know, the person that is basically like has no personality sleeping right now during the middle of the day would be better than Leah. But yes, you specifically would have been much better. Correct. Right. Okay. They made a mistake. Um, all right. So do you think that people from the original Housewives of New York will be joining this lawsuit? 
Yeah, like I think that, look, I mean, and let me just say, because people are saying, why is, but you even asked, why is Bethany doing this? I think that I really do think, look, she wants money, right? Like she could get money out of this. But I do think that this, like she really doesn't want to go back. That really is true. She doesn't need the money. So if your legacy, I mean, look, Bethany has an ego. It's all about Bethany. So if your legacy is that you changed the face of reality TV and the contracts and the treatment. And that was you. Oh, I think it's more than that, David. I think there's something. Yeah. I think there's something up her sleeve. She's either going to be in the works to start her own network. Um, It's bigger than that. There is an end game for her for sure. And she's going to say that it was, you know, it's something that was born out of these thoughts of how to do the right thing. But I can see, you know, it didn't work for her to have her talk show. She's dabbled in all these different businesses and different reality shows and that, that, that. I think that her next step is going to be that she's an either an agent for reality stars, which, you know, could, could fall under her, her umbrella of what she's good at. Or it could be that she wants to start her own network called B, Bethany, whatever it is. And then all these new reality shows will be born from it. That's my prediction. Um, I think you are one trillion, bazillion, quadrillion percent right when you come to the network part of it. I think an agent is too hands on. Look, I mean, she she is on YouTube now and she says on YouTube now she's not making a ton of money on YouTube because you don't. But her numbers are going up. But she says, you know, I own my content. It's true. You saw me in the Randall scandal. Did you see little clips from my podcast? Guess what? They couldn't use those clips. That is cha-ching, cha-ching, and we have to work something out here. So you do own your content on YouTube, and she says this over and over, how at least I own my content on YouTube. I agree with you. As soon as I heard that, I was like, she doesn't want to go back because it's she's past this giving and patrol. I agree. I think now people have pointed out, I would love to see the contracts that she issued when she had her own reality show last year or two years ago or 2020, I think it was, you know, the big shot would be on HBO. I bet you those contracts were very one-sided towards Bethany and Mark Burnett, but, but, Mm. because I mean, I really, but. Oh, wait, that's a good point. I want to hear from those people who are on her show and see how she treated them as being the person in power and how to sign a contract. Oh, so we need to hear from that person what those contracts look like and if she's just full of shit now. Right. I I bet you that contract was so pro-Bethany and producer and money, but it, so it's like you're kind of screwing yourself, but not really. But I agree with you. I think with Bethany, there's always a master plan. I could see her starting her own network. Now, you're going to have to give all these things, Bethany, because, you I mean, she'll have to. But I still think if she can make, you know, $100 million for having her own network versus, you know, 190, so be it, or whatever the number is. Right. She really wants the Bethany clause stricken. So, like, her contracts will have to adhere to this in residuals. But I think it's peanuts compared to having your own network. And I do agree with you that I think if there's, listen, it's just like anything else. If there were one airline out there that said we we undercut and we're still the same quality, we would all take that airline, right? If but listen, if- but li- yeah, totally. But listen to this. She could be having talks right now with the people in the writer strike and the actors, is it an actor strike too? Yeah, actors and writers. So this whole strike, she could be talking to them and saying, why don't you come over and write a reality script for me or get involved in reality right now because you're on a strike. Let's build this up really quick before you get your job back. I mean, my one of my best friends is living in L.A. and she's a writer, a screenwriter, and she is nervous about her job. So she's actually going to come to Florida for a few months and live with me until she figures it out. Now, if she was offered a job in reality TV, she could take it and that this would work for her. So, right. And they would have to call, I mean, yes, except SAG has a lot of strange rules of its own, but yes, to your point. Yeah, Yeah. sure. There's a whole other opportunity for these people. If she starts a network and then gives them jobs. I agree. And like the people she's meeting through this, I mean, listen, I mean, she could have her own version of housewives. Like I I agree that it's bigger. I, I, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it's not just about her legacy, but I can tell you like Garagos and Friedman, it's not about their legacy. I mean, it is, but there's, there's money. So that's where it's like, if they don't, if they didn't smell something here, Garagos would say, fuck off, Bethany. Like there's gotta be something. 
Garagos, I don't know if people are connecting the dots here. Garagos is a huge lawyer, but he's a criminal defense lawyer. Um, which is an interesting way to go. I mean, he's right right now representing the Menendez brothers to get them out and get them a new fair trial, which is a big deal. And he's also been the main guy who was representing Scott Peterson, the guy who killed his pregnant wife. Uh, He killed Lacey Peterson and the baby. I think the baby's name was Connor, uh, unborn baby. And And he's on death row right now. Um, and didn't he, was he Michael Jackson also, or am I making that up? Yeah, he did represent Michael Jackson. That was obviously a long time ago. And I don't remember the details of that. And he represented part. Gabrielle Union, I think mm-hmm. against, uh, the voice. Yes. Right. So he does do things that are not criminal, but he's most known for being a criminal attorney. And I have my own history with him. I, um, you know, when I, when my name was all over the papers and the news, uh, on, Thanksgiving of 2009, I knew who he was because I was a Nancy Grace fan, someone we both love and adore. Nancy, she Grace. was just on behind the velvet rope, bow yep. down. And um, and so I didn't know what lawyer to call. I knew I needed a lawyer immediately because the paparazzi were, uh, you know, outside of my house in droves. It was at least 50 of them, and I did not know what to do. So all I could think of was to call the lawyers that I had seen on Nancy Grace, and the two lawyers were. Gloria Allred and Mark Gergos. And I Googled his number. I called his office and he called me back um, the next morning. And the only reason I didn't hire him is because Gloria's team called me at about two in the morning. So I got their call first, but he's a great guy. You know, I've spoken to him on the phone. I think he's great. He's smart. I would love to have him on my show, but I'm more, I really want to talk to him about the Menendez um, the Menendez brothers and, and whether yes. or not, he, I mean, obviously he thinks they have a chance of getting a new trial, but, um, you know, it's very interesting, um, to see how people are getting on board because they think that they've been in jail long enough for something that was induced by two kids who were abused, sexually abused for so long and what that can do to you. The men, the Menendez case is one that I'm just, I'm really obsessed with it. I mean, I watched all the movies. Like, I mean, I lived through it. I'm not, you know, a spring chicken over here. Um, So I remember it. Do you think they should, do you think they should get out by now? Yeah. I'm like kind of, yeah. I believe you do the crime, you do the time, you know, you do the crime, you do the time and then you move on. And I know they're still doing the time, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, listen, people hate me 24 seven for a lot of things I say. So yeah, I, I say, let them out. I mean, how long has it been now? 30 years? 40 years. I mean, I know they brutally killed their parents, but that's kind of where my, my, my gut says, I say, let them out. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll cover that in a whole nother episode. Yeah. Cause we'll have the haters and it's fine. I have a lot of haters. Um, you know, listen, you don't so, have haters. You haven't made it David. Uh, exactly. I say that all the time, but so people, when they say like, I think, cause I listen, I am not going to mention names, but I tell people I get the calls. All, I get calls from housewives all day now. Not because of this, just in general, but everyone, every house, like she burned her bridge. She, I'm like, I, we're past that. Like Bethany is not like, she's not you. You have to step outside yourself. So like, she understands that she burned her bridge. She's not going she's back. prepared for that. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't, and she's like, what bridge? We're past I don't that. need Bravo. Right. She thinks she's bigger than Bravo. So she doesn't need that bridge. I, I'm pretty convinced that she doesn't give a shit. Uh, what's interesting to me to see is if she's going to go after Andy. Well, he is. I mean, I have that on my list here. His name is in there. So here's the thing, having, you know, being a lawyer myself, having run corporate America, HR, a lot of places, including Martha Stewart, no ego, just a like, look, I have so I have zero emotions in business. And it's like the way things work is just there's no justice. So when something like this happens, if we're going to make it go away and we're going to change whatever somebody usually loses their job or two, right? We have a changing of the guards. Like when it's this big, like if this really is this big, which Bethany seems to say it isn't so to these lawyers, like I just wonder how deep this is going to go and how, I mean, look, I mean, maybe I'm being dramatic, but removing Andy would be the most visible like signed to the outward public, not saying he's responsible, not saying he did anything wrong. There's people in corporate. I'm just saying like, I don't know. Somebody is going to lose their job because of this. If this doesn't go away, period. Remember what happened with CNN? They brought in a new guy, gave him a year to, to fix it up. Then there was all sorts of problems. Don Lemon got fired. And then the new 
guy running CNN was ousted again. So yep. it would make sense that the guy running the company, meaning Bravo, would be ousted if there's so much unhappiness and people are having such a problem. My question for you is what are the chances that Andy Cohen will really be removed and canceled? I don't know. Listen, I mean, it, it, stranger things have happened. I, I said this the other day to someone and they told me like I went from zero to a hundred, but seeing things like this play out, that's what happens. You go, you don't just remove some quiet person. You remove somebody. I mean, he's not like running the network, but he's running housewives. And I don't know. It's, it's especially when we get into like, you mean to tell me that in all that, and I'm not even saying he's done the most egregious stuff. I'm just saying to the people listening to this, to the average person that's on the Instagram, that's the person that's going to get everybody talking around the world. Right. So you mean to tell me there's no texts or emails or anything ever between a castmate, a guest on the show? I mean, I, I, no. Like, I think it's, I do think it is possible. I, I really do. I truly, in my heart of hearts, do. If this doesn't go away. What do you think is the future of reality TV at this point? I mean, could you have TV shows that, aren't based on so much drama and uh, this toxic fusion between castmates. I mean, if that is all taken out, where's reality TV going to go? Well, if you look at it, we've had that. We have it now. So like right now, Selling Sunset, on, which is a huge hit for Netflix. We have real estate porn. We have a lot of drama. I mean, this past season, my girl, Chriselle, accused Nicole of being, she said, you know, you're all cracked out on drugs. And Nicole said, are you accusing me of being on crack? Now, not really. That was a whole thing. So that's drama. There's no pushing. There's no shoving. There's no... I think we had the Osbournes. We have the Kardashians. I mean, the Osbournes. So we've had, we had the Hills. We had Jersey Shore. I mean, although granted, Snooki and JWoww have joined the suit. I mean, I think their names are being thrown around. So I don't know what's going on, you know, behind closed doors. But I think outwardly, you can make reality TV without tons of conflict. Mm, okay. Right? I mean, I remember hearing Spencer Pratt talking about how there was all sorts of conflict way back when, and now they have the Hills reboot and he can't kind of get on board with the other actors because none of them, they're all older now. Right. But none of them are willing to do stupid shit for TV anymore. So that was canceled, like, but that's exactly correct. I had right. Audrina on my, my show from the Hills. And she said, yeah, no, it's all true. Spencer, like Spencer got there and was like, guys, we're going to be canceled. This is boring. And Spencer's great at the reality. And he's yeah. definitely part of this. He's definitely involved with Bethany. But yeah, that exact thing. He said, like, this isn't how you make a reality show. And they did get canceled. Audrina said, I just wouldn't go there. I just wouldn't do this. I mean, I just were moms. So, I mean, to your point, I don't know. I don't know. Like, can they do it? I personally love The Hills New Beginnings, but I guess I'm in the minority because it's long gone. But that's an interesting point you brought up. Somebody could be part of the lawsuit that wasn't directly affected. Like Spencer, you know, I don't know that anything abusive happened to him, but he's witnessed the fact that you cannot continue a show and it will get canceled unless you do something stupid, almost illegal, sexual, um, you know, humiliating, whatever it is, and to make ratings. And if you don't participate in something like that, either you will get booted off the show or the show will get canceled. So I could see him joining just for the pure fact that he's a witness to what goes on, but not because he doesn't like being a part of that, you know, the movement, because he, he definitely, he's a guy who is hoping for a new reality gig all the time. I mean, I just heard him on Heather McDonald talking about how, you know, he want he'll take any gig that'll come up for a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is. Cause that's the way, you know, he's a reality TV star. They're looking for their next reality TV jump, you know, which makes sense. And if you could play the game um, and if you could play the game and, ke and keep your sense of integrity um, while doing it, there doesn't seem to be a problem. It's just like people lose sight. And I think it happens with housewives more than any other yeah. 
Like that because is they what promote it is. you. They promote you to be an animal. I mean, even on this new season of the Housewives of New York, I haven't watched it. I will admit, but I have seen clips. I know you have watched it, but just in the clips or the um or the uh, commercials Trailers, for the show, yeah. um, it's the same kind of fighting. It's the it is a reboot of what they were trying to do on all the other shows it's just a but bunch very of light very light they've lightened it up but yes it's the same but they're fighting. fighting over cheese i mean i saw that on the latest commercial it's like why would i watch that that is so dumb these girls who think they're better than everyone else are throwing food and yelling at each other and ripping off each other's sunglasses and saying you talk to me and look at me in the eye and they're arguing about cheese that is so dumb it really is i don't understand that storyline and now they're going to internalize it. And as the season goes on, and this one says this on Twitter, and that one says this, they're going to get so angst in their hearts, and it's going to get so toxic. Whereas a Spencer Pratt would say, I'm here, the clock started. Even Nene Leakes with her recent, she just did some interviews with my good friend, Carlos King. She said, tell me what time to show up. Has the check I'll cleared? Give, I'll, I'll give do you the TV. job yeah. and I'll go home. Spencer's the same way. I mean, that's how I would be if I got a reality show. I don't care. People say things now. I don't care what you say about me. Let me clock in. Let me do the job. Spencer gets it. He's He would be horrible to people. He would be the villain. And it would be time. And he'd be like, look, dude, I don't care. Let's go have a drink. That's yeah. how you do it. He I played don't understand the villain the and he was housewives. paid for it and he was okay with it. But that's not the majority. It's not and, housewives, but- girl. But he also wasn't like humiliating people. He was getting, he was the one getting humiliated, but he liked the the check to be cleared. And I respect him for that, frankly. But last thing I just want to point out, you know, I was on Celebrity Rehab. Um, I had a, a cast that was filled with very interesting people. Um, and Ms. Dickinson. My, yeah, my roommate was Janice Dickinson. And, you know, the thing about me is that I was not an actress going into it. I was not a celebrity like they were. I was a household name. I was infamous. I got paid more than anyone else has ever been paid um, to do that show, to do any reality show, I think. Um, and um, it was very interesting to me because my time on that show, I will tell you, was real. There was nothing. I was not worried about how they edited me because I was like, I'm being exactly who I want to be. And if you have a problem with that, you're going to have a really hard time figuring out a way to edit me to be some villain that I'm not. Um, I left the show for one night because I got so angry about what was happening with the way that Janice was behaving. And I called um, Dr. Drew out on it. And there's a clip that I have of it, which I, I should play at some point where I said, listen, I'm trying to work here. I'm trying to get some real mental clarity for myself because I'm struggling, but it's distracting that you're letting people like Janice do stuff for TV, for ratings when I'm here to get help. And that's really, I can't believe that you're enabling that. And we got, um, Dr. Drew and I got into it and I ended up leaving because I thought it was so toxic and wrong. I came back and I had it out with Janice and all of that was real because I was angry and she accused me of all these things, but she was doing it for TV, not because she wanted to get better, not because she was working on herself. And I'll tell you something. I loved being on that show. Not only did it help me, I made some great friendships. I learned a lot about myself and it helped me deal with what I went in there thinking was a joke, which was love addiction, but how I choose men and choose love in my life, it really gave me tools that I needed to use. So I'm thankful for being on that show. But my point to that is you represent yourself how you want to be represented and see where that gets you. And usually you'll feel good about it. And it'll, they will have a very hard time saying that you are someone that you're not. I agree. I agree. I feel like if you did it, just move on. And I mean, these people that call and ask for edits and you know, and then they eventually lose their jobs. Again, I find in my experience, having interviewed a gazillion reality TV stars, like I really can do, I've done the market research. My most difficult guests before and after are housewives, period. That's, I, that's a real fact. Then you have actual actors, Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore is bigger than housewives will ever be. They're paid. They come on. They're just like, great, great. Oh my God, I'm texting. I can't stand you. Hi, David. It's me, Snooki. How I'm like, great. This is like how I would be too. It's like, it's a job. It's press for your show. Yes, it's, they're professional. Something yeah. about housewives and maybe Bravo in general, it's internalized. And then we could end on this note, but like, where are the other letters? That's what I don't understand. Where's the letter to ABC about The Bachelor? Where's the letter to RuPaul's Drag Race for VH1? Where's the le letter to Netflix? Christine Quinn alleged all these things against Adam DeVello from S Selling Sunset. Like, where are these 
letters. Why is there only an NBC and Bravo? It makes you think it's the most egregious thing out of all of them. And it'll be interesting to see if more letters do come out. Um, I want to ask you, if you were going to pitch a new type of reality show, what would it be then? Ooh, a new type of show. I mean, I know the show that I would like to pitch because I can be in it. But a new show, oh, it is so hard. I mean- While you think of that, I'll tell you mine. I think it should be something about second acts or starting over because I think that so many people um, are interested in what that's like to have a comeback story. So it could be a group of people just like, you know, how they do with most of these shows, like a housewife type of thing. But it's almost like, you know, you're trying to find your second act. Either you're trying to find love after a certain age and you're divorced and you have kids, you're moving into a new city and you're starting a new job and you have to make all new friends You and you're a single mom and you have to put your kid in school with all new people and get to know everyone and see how that goes. And you're dating and trying to find a husband or a new life or whatever it is. I think that this a show about second acts, um, uh, you know, would be great. That's because that's what I'm going through. I've just moved to Florida Everything is new for me. Yes, I have a certain amount of friends here, but it is all new and it's going to be interesting to see how my life unfolds. And if I had a camera following me for the last four months of just being here in general, where the year kind of hasn't started yet, the school year and me getting out of my house, um, it'll be interesting to see how my relationships develop, the um, what happens with you know all new things, my job, being in a hosting a podcast, all these things that are panning out are to me really interesting. So that's what I think. Okay. I mean, you know, listen, I could poke holes in any reality pitch. So I don't want to, Yeah, I, I wish this pitch goes somewhere and I'm being serious. Like, let's get it out there. I'll produce it for you. I see some holes, minor, but you know, nothing. Uh, nothing what are the major. holes? Well, like, what is it? A docu-series? Is it you in Florida? Is it someone else in New York? Is it someone else in California? Is it a group? Those don't usually work. It usually needs to be like a group of it's people. It's going to be a group. It could be a group of people that have moved so other from people New York, in okay. former New York and California and Texas, because we're all, they're all moving to Palm Beach. How they start over here. Okay. And I think it'll be, I think it'd be interesting because it would be uplifting or it'd be like a version of sex in the city where you get your, your new group of friends and you're trying to build each other up as they're all going through their lives. I think that's a better version of a story. Fine. Well, guess what? When you sell that, I will actually take residence in your house and I will be part of it. And I'll be one of the people that's trying to start over. I've got a lot going on and I need to start over in life. So make okay. clear out a wing for me and count me okay. in for your pitch. What a talk. We listen, we got to keep doing this about the strike because it's going to keep changing. As we end, Bethany recently did her new TikTok and she's like, for anyone that says this and that. And she said, yes, I fed the machine and here, here we are. And like, if you think that this is going away or whatever, buckle up. So she's basically said, this is real. Who knows? Tongue in cheek. She said, watch what happens. Um, little, uh, I mean, come on. That's a little back. She said, if you take a shot at this B, she's referencing her tagline, but she said, watch what happens. Yes. She's, she's coming for Andy girl. She is. Yeah. She, they're not backing down. So it'll be interesting to have you back on to talk about who you've had on. Cause I know you talk to a lot of reality stars to get their opinion, to see if they're part of, um, this lawsuit and see where it goes. It'll be interesting to see how it ends up. I can't wait. Oh my God. What a crossover. I cannot wait to talk to you soon, Rachel. You could tell. Thank you. Thank you for being here. David Yontef behind the velvet rope. Where can people listen to your show? At behind velvet rope at David Yontef are my Instagrams and behind the velvet rope, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, anywhere you can find a podcast. And we've had interviews with all your favorites. So check us out. Yep. And then for those of you listening on David's podcast, you can come hear my episodes um, on misunderstood with Rachel, you could tell that's M I S S and we are on Apple, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast. So please come and listen to my show as well. Love it. Bye. Thank 
you so much for listening to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a five-star rating and review. You can support the show by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. Do you have ideas for the show or want to reach out? Email us at info misunderstood podcast at gmail.com. That's spelled M-I-S-S understood. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Misunderstood.